Valentine's Day, 1998. I remember that day when I asked you to be my Valentine. That special bond that I felt was going on between us was increasing, and I wanted to take that to the next level. I remember the look on your face, the happiness and excitement of the day we spent together drained from your face like water running down a plug hole. You said no. I loved you. You know I did. So why would you do this to me? Why? I remember when you walked away into the crowd of lovers. I sat on the bench, crying. I walked home on my own. No one was there for me to offer me comfort after what you did. I remember waking up and looking at the patterns of my cuts from the last night. The blood on the carpet was still there. The writing on my bedroom walls was still there. Why, the writing said, all written in blood. I remember two weeks later, I saw you on the street with another man much younger and better looking than me. The pain just grew and grew. Everything we had done together has just been thrown away by you. Every time we had sex, you told me that you loved me and me only. I remember walking down that alley and that gang of thugs mugged me and killed me. I died thinking of you as the knife plunged into my chest, ending my life with pain in my heart as the knife dug deeper into me. I could feel the life slipping away. The sheer pain was excruciating. I remember at my funeral my friends and family were there. My mother was crying. My father was comforting her. I looked around, but couldn't find you anywhere. When I died, it wasn't nice. All I could feel was searing pain through my body as if I was on fire. The pain was excruciating and I only escaped because I didn't feel complete. I felt I needed something more, and I knew what it was. It was revenge. I don't know how I escaped, but it involved lots of pain. When I got back to Earth, I felt like going straight home to say hey to everyone and say I survived. Then I realized no one could see me. So I just decided to kill the thugs that took away my life. I could still move things, but I was invisible. It was great fun. And I enjoyed it so much. The first one I went for ended up face down on the ground with a cracked skull and no scalp. He never knew what hit him. I used the same knife he used to kill me to carve his pretty little eyes out of their sockets. By this time, the two other assholes had backed into a corner. I ripped the first one's fingers off with my teeth. After that, I cut his eyes out, holding them in the same hand as the others. I knew what I was going to use them for. I was going to make a necklace 
for you. With the second shuddering in pain on the floor, and the third in tears, I felt the rush and became even more violent. I cracked his jaw with the first uppercut and dislodged his head from his body with the second. And as with the others, I cut his eyes out with the same knife and kept the eyes and the knife for later use. I knew where I had to go next. I was going to his house, the one who took you from me. I was going to be less forgiving to him. When I first saw him, he knew something was wrong. He could sense me getting closer. I knocked him out with a single punch to the neck, taking out his airways and suffocating him till he collapsed. After that, I surgically cut a hole into his throat so he could breathe. I wanted this to last for as long as possible. He choked up blood and started to wake. On the verge of death, it appeared he could see me. He knew who I was. But you were dead, he shuddered. Oh, he was so wrong. I cut his eyes out with him still screaming, then plunged the knife deep into his stomach watching his intestines pour out onto the cold carpet floor. At least, I think it was cold. It was too drenched in blood for me to tell. I felt so much better after this, but still not complete. I was still missing something. It was you. I needed you. I would never be complete without you. So I set off for your house, whistling to myself along the way. I was so happy for some reason. I knew nothing could stop me now. As I drew closer, I felt happier and happier. You were surprised to see me. You cried, and I told you not to. You wouldn't stop, and I tied you up. I got angry. I shouted. I cut you. I put the necklace I made for you on, and you just screamed louder. I plunged the murder weapon that was used on me into your eye, and from then on, we were tied together in a permanent bond. No one would separate us. I was happy now. I could finally rest.